This is the new Emu Roadster. Oh, man, this thing pulls me back. Blood type is A positive. Health insurance is in my right pocket. Okay, this is it folks. The full review of the new Emu Roadster, the world's fastest production model electric scooter. We've got the tested top speed, the tested range, plus get up close with all the amazing looking carbon fiber. Plus find out what makes this scooter the fastest electric scooter we've ever tested. If you're joining us for the first time, I'm Paul and this is Rider Guide, the channel that tests more electric scooters than anybody. Subscribe if you like hands-on testing of scooters or just like watching me ride stupid fast. So this is Emove's new flagship, the Emove Roadster, and it's uh, made by Voro Motors, and they're one of the biggest distributors of electric scooters in the United States, and based down in Los Angeles, California, which is where this scooter was designed. They've been working on this for three years, and we've seen some pretty different concepts come through during development, but this is the final production version, aside from a couple little details like the brakes. The Roadster specs are absolutely mind-blowing. 15,500 watts of peak power. Uh, it's got a battery that's like 3,360 watt hours. That's like 39% bigger than the Wolf King GTR, third biggest battery we've ever tested behind the Dualtron X Limited and the Storm Limited. It's just a monster of a spec sheet. It's an 84 volt battery and it passes 80 amps to each motor at peak. But despite having a battery 39% bigger than the Wolf King GTR, it only weighs 4% more because of all the carbon fiber. And that battery is made from top shelf cells. They're 21700 cells from Samsung. So of course, all that carbon fiber and name brand batteries come at a price. And so this scooter is $5,795 which, you know, it's a lot, but relative to other super scooters and exotic scooters, it's actually not that much. And it is a production scooter, which means they're gonna be making these before people order them, but it's limited production. So I expect like the first several batches are gonna sell out. But on the other hand, it's not like Orion or Weeped where you make a deposit and then wait for maybe a year for your scooter to arrive. But if you're interested in one, you should definitely use the link down in this video's description and reserve your spot in line. So what's the Emu Roadster like to ride? Well, it's like a smaller 40 pound lighter Dualtron X Limited. Uh, it's just got really great suspension, gobs of power, a huge deck, um, and just, you know, a ton of fun. The ride quality is really like a greatest hits collection of all of our favorite scooters. Let me show you a demo. There are five riding modes and you can tune each one of them to kind of do whatever you want. In the extreme modes, it's like riding a Storm Limited where it's just like all throttle all the time. And I'll demo that right now. Just kind of jerky, you know, everything all at once. But the mode that I like best is sort of like a NAMI mode and you can adjust the initial throttle, you can adjust the current and the maximum speed all separately. And so with the NAMI, what I call NAMI mode, I have it kind of a soft initial start, but all the speed and all the current once you get going. So it's just like a lot easier to ride and um, you know, just nice and smooth on the throttle. The stem is super stiff. It reminds me of a Dualtron X Limited. Just, you know, a really nice place to be standing by in this huge like two by four of carbon fiber. And then you know, the bars are great. I like that they sweep back a little more than a Dualtron X Limited, which is just for me way more comfortable. It has one very Dualtron like thing about it and that the bars are only 38 inches high, which for some reason I don't like on Dualtrons, but I don't mind at all on the Emu Roadster. I guess it's because it's just such a sporty scooter. But then the handlebar width is like 29 and three quarters inches, which is really wide and feels like really appropriate for such a high performance scooter. The suspension is amazing. It's hydraulic and has adjustable preload and adjustable damping. It is very much like the best ones we've seen, which are like the ones on the Nami. Uh, really, really like the suspension on the scooter. It has a damper and it kind of needs it. Um, at low speeds like this, you don't need it at all. You can just turn it down. Um, but then when you really need it, you know, you can you can ratchet it up with your foot. Um, and uh, it's definitely something you want at high speeds. In general, this is a naturally stable scooter. It speeds up to 40 miles per hour. It just feels really good and very comfortable. Um, above 40, it's actually still really stable. But if you start giving it any weird inputs, it doesn't like it. And that's where you need the stabilizer to be there. But at any speed, this is really 
an experts only scooter. Uh, no new rider should start out on one of these. Um, you just won't really appreciate it. And it's, you know, it's kind of scary and it's really expensive. So let's talk about the build quality a little bit. Oh, and before I do, let me address what I'm not wearing. I'm not wearing a lot of gear right now. And that's because uh, I'm just cruising around and sort of talking to you. Like when I do any of the testing, any of the serious riding I do on this, I'm wearing a full face helmet, I'm wearing gloves, I'm wearing a full suit. So, you know, wear your gear if you're gonna ride a scooter like this. So the build quality, I mean, just everywhere you look, it's carbon fiber and it's high quality carbon fiber. It feels really good. It's not like the cheap kind that's kind of like dry looking. And build quality also is like a greatest hits. It's like Orion crossed with a Dualtron crossed with a Nami. It's got the, the carbon fiber bars and the mount right here that feel really nice. Um, I really like that it pulls back. And the display is one of my favorites too. It's really the same one that's on the Remove Roadrunner Pro. And you can see it here. And you kind of see how the display changes when I speed up or when I give it some gas. It's really easy to see in sunlight and it's just, you know, just a very good looking display. We'll, we'll switch back to a studio shot here and show you this is what it looks like when the wheels are off the ground and you spin it all the way up. You can see how the colors change and the speed goes up to, you know, around 100 miles per hour. Originally it said 193, but we had to set the magnets correctly, but it came with a funny setting in the in the firmware. I'm sure the production models won't have that. The controls for the modes and then also for the headlight and turn signals are very much like, the, in fact, they're exactly like the ones that are on the NAMI. In fact, the headlight right here, that's also a NAMI style headlight that you see, but the throttle is new to us. This is a very short throw throttle. Uh, it's vertical and uh, it has no dead zone in it. So like it just just immediately goes and it feels pretty good, but it can get a little twitchy in the, you know, very highest performance modes. The brakes on ours are branded Voro Motors and they're four piston calipers and they feel fantastic, but the production version is going to come with Magura MT5 brakes, which are among the very best you can get. Those of course are four piston calipers as well. The grips are nothing special, but they do have a locking ring here and they don't move when you're riding at all. They stay fully locked in and that to me is like the most important thing for grips is I just hate it when my grips are like moving around while I'm riding. It has a single charge port down on the deck and uh, it comes with a five amp charger. So they say it takes 5.7 hours to charge, but I calculate it to be more like eight hours, but you're really unlikely to ever drain a scooter with a battery this big. The deck is bare smooth carbon fiber, but we've got it striped out with some grip tape here because for the top speed runs, we wanted some really strong grip. Um, but you know, you can kind of set it up any way you want. The one warning I give you there is that when you fold this thing down, you kind of lay the stem on the deck and you do have to watch out for scraping the stem up if you fold it up that way. The frame is entirely carbon fiber and is super solid. It has a rider weight limit of 500 pounds, which is the highest we've ever seen. We took it apart and there is a little layer of aluminum in the very bottom, but it's not structural. It's a heat sink for the two motor controllers. At either end of the scooter, it has adjustable DNM hydraulic shocks. They're adjustable for both preload, which is this little collar right here, and then the rebound adjuster is kind of tucked away down underneath here, and they work really well. These are right up there with some of my favorite hydraulic shocks, which are the ones on the Nami Bernie. And since it has adjustable suspension, it's nice that it has an adjustable length kickstand too. It looks really strong and you can set it so you get just whatever amount of lean you like to keep the scooter stable when it's parked. Well, one thing to watch out for is this angle right here can catch you on the ankle when you're pushing it. Ah! And these wheels and tires are like the holy grail of tires and wheels for scooters. What do I mean? It's got tubeless pneumatic tires, but it's also got split rims, which normally don't go together because the rim needs to seal in the middle to help keep the air in there. But these have an O-ring just like some Dualtron scooters. And so you've got easy tire changes, but you've got all the advantages of tubeless tires, which is that they're more puncture resistant and work better with sealant. And speaking of sealant, these come with sealant already bonded to the inside of the tires, so they're puncture resistant. But you could also also swap them out for PMT racing tires if you wanted more traction. The motors themselves are very special and they have to be to handle 80 amps of current each. The thing that tipped me off about that is that normally you see three wires going into one side of the motor. You get a blue one, a red one, and a yellow one. This one has a blue, red, and yellow wire going into both sides of the motor. One really fat set on one side and then a skinnier set on the other side. And I guess they need to separate it out for more cooling and just to handle all that current. And the carbon continues into the fenders. These are super super solid carbon fiber fenders. Sometimes you see carbon that's kind of like paper and these are like structural meaty carbon fiber. And they look like they would catch the water pretty well. The water angle is gonna come off right about here. But realistically though, even though it's got an IPX5 water resistance rating, 
I don't think I'd ride a $6,000 scooter in the rain. So another element that makes me feel like this is a greatest hit scooter is one of my favorite footrests. This is the one from the Dualtron Thunder 2. And this looks a lot like that, including the tail light right here. Ours feels like it needs to be reinforced a little bit more, but I'm sure they'll take care of that on the protection scooters. So let me demonstrate the Roadster's turn signals. I love the way they wrap all the way around. At Riderfest, the Roadster drag raced against the world's quickest production electric scooters, the Wolf King GTR and the InMotion RS. And unfortunately, I was riding the GTR and RS, so I lost both times. So we knew the Roadster was gonna be faster, but not by exactly how much. We're gonna do two back-to-back -back speed runs, average them together to cancel out any headwind or tailwind. And uh, we're gonna find out for sure how fast this scooter can go. For two years, the Rider Guide top speed record has stuck at 61 miles per hour. And then recently, the Wolf King GTR came along and just blew everything out of the water by going five miles per hour faster. But now, just two months later, the e Roadster comes along and goes six miles per hour faster than that with a top speed of 72.1 miles per hour. I am nervous. What's it gonna be like? Woo, it's got some punch right off the line. This is literally my first couple of feet riding this. Uh, we bounced around on it in the, uh, in the office, but I haven't ridden it. And it's got uh, quite a bit of response. All right, blood type is A positive. Health insurance is in my right pocket. Okay. <laughs> all right, I'm gonna need all the runway, all the runway. Oh my gosh, this thing is on fire. I'm gonna back all the way up. I've never done this before. I've never started from this far back before, but I just need, I need all the runway I can get. I'm legitimately scared right now. Okay, they give me the go sign. God, man, this thing pulls me. is adamant that they've gone 79 to 80 miles per hour on their units, but we've tried run after run after run and are confident that our unit's top speed is 72.1 miles per hour. Now, there is a newer version of firmware that we haven't tried yet, so it's possible that the production version is even faster than this. Either way, it's without a doubt the fastest scooter we have ever tested, and we think it's the world's fastest production scooter, meaning, you know, a scooter that's in regular production that you could just buy off the shelf without placing a deposit and waiting a year or in some cases, multiple years, <coughs> Ryan. As much as it makes headlines, top speed isn't actually that important. Really, nobody should go more than 70 miles per hour on an electric scooter, including us. It's just not useful. But what is useful are zero to 30 times because that's something you can use at every stoplight. Let's check out the leaderboard. Here are the top six quickest electric scooters we've tested from zero to 30 miles per hour. The Emu Roadster beats former champion Wolf King GTR to 30 miles per hour by two tenths of a second. It's no slouch when it comes to range either. The claimed range is 74 miles at 25 miles per hour, but we recorded 54.7 miles on our hilly range test course, riding a little faster than typical car traffic across town. This puts the Roadster in fifth place versus the longest range scooters we've ever tested and beats both the Wolf King GTR and InMotion RS by 10 miles. You're never gonna believe who I ran into on the street while doing the range test of the new eMove Roadster. It's Chuck Temple. <laughs> and I'm gonna take this chance to get his first impressions, like real first impressions. We literally just bumped into each other like a minute ago. All right, so what do you think? I love the carbon fiber look. This is a showstopper piece, for sure. In our hill climb test, the Roadster beat absolutely everything, reaching the top of our steep 10% grade, 200 foot long hill in 6.1 seconds. The maximum hill climb spec is 50 degrees, but I'm not sure if that's a typo. I don't think you could even walk up a 50 degree hill. The braking distance is phenomenal. Even with these pre-production zoom brakes, it scored fourth out of all the scooters we've ever tested, stopping from 15 miles per hour in 9.1 feet. And we're sure it's gonna be even better than that when it gets the Magura MT5s that come on the production version. And one of the reasons it stops so well is because like a Tesla, all the weight is down here in the base. The stem weighs nothing. There's no regen brakes, 
you know that's the electronic brakes that recharge your battery as you slow down, even though the display lets you adjust something called EABS level. I don't miss it though, they clearly work and are gonna be even better on the production version. Like all Beast scooters, portability is not good, and on the Roadster, it's especially not good. Right up there with the X Limited because both of them need tools to fold the stem. It's also heavy, weighing an RG certified 143 pounds, and doesn't give you a lot of places to grab onto. But that said, I was able to load and unload it myself into an SUV, even with a bad shoulder. So we've started a new thing lately, and that's scoring scooters on reliability, and the Roadster gets a high reliability score of 8.8. .8. It's boosted by having name brand batteries, an IP rating, tubeless tires with sealant, and split rims. But the reliability of an ultra high performance scooter like this one does depend on the rider a little bit. If you're riding super hard on a hot day, watch your controller temperatures. If you don't feel like watching them, you can always set a limit using the dashboard. The reason I say this is after two hours of riding in hilly conditions at car-like speeds, the temperatures of my Roadster were sometimes getting up into the mid 70s, but it should be a lot better on the production models because unlike ours where the motor controllers are just sitting on the heatsink, on the production models, they're gonna be bolted down and have better heat transfer. So what other high performance electric scooters would we consider? Let's look at the competition. These are the scooters I think people would be most likely to cross shop with the eMove Roadster. We covered the alternatives pretty well already, so I'm just gonna keep this short by summarizing them here on screen. So there you have it, the world's fastest production model electric scooter. I hope you had as much fun watching this video as we had making it. If you like this content, please like the video and subscribe so you won't miss what's coming next. And if you wanna help support us, use the purchase link down in this video's description. Let us know your favorite fast scooter down in the comments. I'm Paul from Rider Guide. Enjoy your ride.